YouTube. The holidays are over. I am ready to get back into the rest of this tutorial. I'm thinking there's only going to be two or three more videos left. The uh, the score system, uh, which will display the score to the screen. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna break that in half. I was gonna put the sound and the score together, but the the videos are tending to run long, so I'll just do the score in this video. The next video will be adding the the sound effects. And then uh, I think that'll pretty much wrap up this tutorial series. I was thinking about putting um, a state machine in, uh, a very basic one to manage the the screen, uh, like a like having a main menu screen and a you know like a splash screen and then having a game over screen. Which um, let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do that. Uh, that'll require a couple more tutorials um, for this series. But um, I don't know. Get back to me and let me know. Uh, with that, we'll jump right in. This is we're going to be setting up our 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 fonts, our sprite fonts, and and displaying our scores to the screen. So we're going to start in the ball class. A couple of tutorials ago, I mentioned that we're going to be handling the score updating within the ball class, just because when the ball hits the walls, we'll know that if it hits the left wall, player two has scored a point, and if it hit the ball hits the right wall, player one has scored a point. So. Uh, we're going to add a couple more public ints to this to the ball class. Now, just so you know, we're in the ball.cs class. It will be score one and score two. This will be basically be player one score and player two score. Uh, we'll set them in the constructor. We'll set them to zero by default because when the game starts, we want the score to be zero to zero. So score one equals zero. Score two equals zero. And what we want to do is, down in our update function, is whenever the ball is bouncing off the left side of the screen, so there's there's uh, two little else statements here where the ball is bouncing off the left wall. It's a good thing we commented this because we can pick them out easy. So when the ball is hitting the left wall, we want the player 2 score to update. So it'll be score 2 will equal score 2 uh, autocomplete sometimes. Score 2 plus 1. So we can copy that. Put that in the other left wall. So every time that it bounces off the left wall, it's going to take the player two score, which starts at zero right now, and it's going to add one to it. So when the score is one, it bounces off the wall again. It'll add one more, and it'll be two. Pretty simple stuff. So um, we'll go for the the uh, hitting the right sides of the walls now. Uh, when it hits the right sides, player one will score. So score one will equal score one plus one. We'll copy that. And we'll bring that down to the other else statement where it's hitting the left wall. Or the right wall, sorry. Okay, and that's it for our ball class. That's all we need to put in for our ball class. Um, over to the game one that CS where we'll set up our sprite fonts. So we're going to have to um, create another variable here. It is going to be a sprite font. We're going to call it, we'll just call it, I'm going to use the font Georgia. Um, you can use any font you want that's in your Windows fonts folder. I'm just going to use Georgia um, because it's simple. We'll just call this Georgia. Uh, we'll want to set some more um, positions here, two more vector twos, so we can set the position of where the text is going to be displayed on the screen. So it's a vector two. Um, we'll call it P1 score pause vector 2 P1 or P2 score position okay now that we have that we will want to set our go down to our load content um, in our fonts we'll have to oh first we want to create a sprite font so go over to your content over here on the right you're going to want to add a new item it will be a sprite font I'll just call it um, Georgia font we'll add it now it's over here in our content now what you can do is it'll open it up by default over here in your explorer and here's where you can set the settings by default when you create a sprite font it's going to be Sego UI mono uh, font I named it Georgia, so I want it to be Georgia, and it is case sensitive based on whatever the font's called in your Windows slash font folder. So, Georgia. Uh, you can change the size. I'm going to up this a little bit. I'm going to put it to about 20. Uh, the spacing you can set if you want. That's the distance between the characters. Uh, there's a lot of um, style settings you can create in here. 
Uh, I normally just change the font name to whatever font I want to use and the size. I don't really bother with the spacing, but that's up to you. So uh, now that we're done with that, you save it off, close that, and back to our game1.cs. So now we can send, set our Georgia um, variable equal to content.load, and it is a sprite font called, we called it Georgia font, which is what we called it over our, in our content over there. Um, we're going to set our starting positions, our starting font positions, which will be the positions they're always going to stay at. So, And I already pre-did this and, and found a good spot for them uh, based on the length and the size of the text. Uh, let me get my notes out here and see what I set those at. Okay, so the P1. Score position will equal, oh, dot x will equal zero because we want the player one score to just be displayed on the top left side. P1 score position dot y be equal to 30. We'll put it about 30 pixels down. And this is just from playing with it earlier. Uh, P2 score position dot x be equal to 850 because I have my width of my screen set to 1024 and we need to leave a little room on the other side for the text to display because if we started it at 1024 uh, the text would just be written off the screen you'd never see it so uh, p2 score position dot y will also be equal to 30 so they line up alright so we have our, our our font set we have our starting positions for our font uh, now what we'll want to do is we'll want to draw that font to the screen. So we're going to go down to our draw function. Drawing fonts. Oh, we'll just pay drawing scores. And this is a little bit of a length, lengthy thing here, but not too bad. It's just sprite batch dot draw like the other ones. It'll be draw string. So we're going to draw a string to the screen. Um, our text, it's going to take uh, a text first, which is Georgia. Uh, what we want it to display, so we'll make this one player one, um, colon, and a space, so we can put the score after that plus. So we want to add to the end of that what the, the updating of the score, so it'd be the ball dot score one uh, to string. And then it takes a position next, which would be our p1 score position that we defined up there and then a color for that for the font and I'm gonna make it uh, blue for player one since the paddles blue we will just make the font blue and semicolon we can copy that so that's drawing the player one text to the screen the score uh, just change a few things we want to display the player two um, updating with the score 2 variable in the pl player 2 score position and we'll make that color red because the paddle color and that should be it if I didn't miss anything uh, we should be able to build this no errors now if if just as a quick side note here if you happen to put in when you're changing uh, your name to whatever font you want it to be let's say I misspelled this and added an L for Georgia for some reason at the end of that. Saved it off and I tried to build. It's going to go into Windows and it's going to look for a font called Georgia while it's building. So you'll know right away um, if that's a valid font or not and if you misspelled it. So we'll remove that, save, rebuild it, and it succeeded. So let's, um, let's run this. And now our scores are displayed to the screen. And you notice that the ball hit the uh, left side of the wall there already, and it updated the player 2 score. Let it hit the right, and it's updating the player 1 score. Now, essentially, um, I have done this game with states, so that when uh, my personal game that I made with this before the tutorial end, so when the first player to get to 5, uh, the game would, would end, and it would display you know, a game over screen and ask if you want to play again. You could hit enter. 
Uh, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, if you guys want me to do a simple state machine in this tutorial series, I could do that. Um, it'd take a couple more videos, but it's really not a big deal, and it'd probably give you guys the basics of a state machine. Let me know. Um, I also put in a few cool variables where when the ball hits the wall and a point is scored, or every time it hits a paddle, the ball will speed up uh, by a given increment, and it gets faster and faster until one player scores, and then the speed resets, which kind of gives it, you know little extra in the gameplay instead of just a, the same speed ball bouncing back and forth and they could go on forever essentially uh, so that's it uh, for the font font uh, section and setting up our scores uh, the next tutorial will be on putting our blip sound in maybe a couple other cool sound effects if I uh, find some other ones that would be be cool maybe some background music or something like that but uh, as usual if you like the video toss me a like uh, if you want to see the, the the rest of these videos uh, go ahead and subscribe I plan on doing some more uh, XNA tutorials after this maybe a 2d shooter a basic 2d sh shooter after this which would be kind of cool It'd be a little more advanced but I think that'd be fun um, until next time